Okay, so this is our first attempt at doing a light board video for Math 2580, um, Calculus 4. Um, so we're going to start with just a quick overview of surfaces in three dimensions, and uh, we're going to look at just the basic examples. Where, as far as kind of hands-on sketching of surfaces it, in three dimensions, it's really hard to do these things by hand, right? That's why I pointed you to all the computer software options for for using computer-generated graphics, because it is really hard to do these by hand, right? Um, so just um, just to kind of you know warm us up, we'll we'll remind ourselves that uh, most of what we're going to do in Calculus Four are setting is R three, so three-dimensional coordinate space, right? And we have this picture, you've seen this now in, you will have seen this in Calculus 3, I hope. Um, so in Calculus 3, you would have seen three-dimensional coordinates in the discussion of space curves. And of course, you, see, you saw this going all the way back to, say, Math 1410, right? Um, so we have this usual convention for labeling the axes. Um, we have sort of this right-hand rule set up. So one of the ways you'll see it is, is this, x, y, Z, something like that. Um, I find these these right hand rule. Some some of this stuff gets a little bit um, confusing, and and also uh, one of the things you might notice is that these mirrors are videoed. So, or, sorry, these videos are mirrored. Huh. Um, so probably my attempts at showing you right hand rule will fail because um, you're seeing a mirror image of me. Um, but this is one way to do it: X, Y, Z going around like that. Um, sometimes you'll see, you know. X and Y like this, and Z uh, is this axis is supposed to be like kind of coming out of the board. Uh, you'll see different ways of representing it, but this is probably the most common setup that we use. Um, so, if you think about you know equations like let's say something like I don't know X plus Y equals two, right? Um, so what does that equation represent? And let's think about, well, what is it in R2 versus what you get in R3, right? So in two dimensions, this is just a line, right? In three dimensions, it's a plane. Right. And again, this is something that uh, hopefully is familiar. You're going all the way back to Math 1410, your linear algebra course, right? Um, and we could draw that line. So if we were drawing that line in the xy plane, and we can always think of the xy plane, you know, R2 kind of sits in R3 as the z equals zero plane. Yeah, we can, we can draw that line. Um, actually, let me do it in yellow. So let's say one, two, one, two. Right. There's our line. So this would be, say, the line x plus y equals um, 2. But if I want to think of this as a line sitting in three-dimensional space, I actually have to give one more condition. z equals 0, right? To get a line in three dimension, and again, going all the way back to linear algebra, if you want a line in R3, you need to intersect two planes, these two planes here, right? Uh, Without the condition that z is equal to zero, you know, you're looking at this plane sitting there in space, right? Um, and again, it's, it's always hard to do justice with a two-dimensional representation of these surfaces sitting inside of three-dimensional space, which is why it's nice to have some graphing software that lets you actually kind of rotate this and look at it from different angles. Clearly, I can't do that on the board. Um, so you should play around with these things in your own time. Uh, what about something like y equals x squared, right? That's our, our good friend, the, uh, the parabola. Everyone's sort of favorite nonlinear curve. Um, or let's go with something that's not a graph in the plane. Let's go with something like a circle, right? Uh, say the unit circle. Circle, right? 
So we have the unit circle. Um, these are curves in the plane if we're stuck to two dimensions, but if we're in R3, these are, are no longer curves, they have to be surfaces. So what do these surfaces look like? Um, well, these become cylinders, right? So this would be called, you know, these, both of these are examples of cylinders. In fact, even this first plane is also considered a cylinder. Um, <coughs> anything that you can kind of generate in three dimensions by taking a curve in the plane and sliding it up and down uh, deserves to be called a cylinder in three dimensions, right? So the, the way these look, if I were to try to draw them, um, if we were going to try to draw this parabolic cylinder, we might start by, by putting that parabola there on the plane. So that would be, you know, this is our y equals x squared, but z equals zero. And then if I wanted to extend this now to a surface in three dimensions, well, you just kind of, you know, you slide all the points up and down. Maybe we'll uh, bring this one out a little bit further. Slide that up like so. All right, and maybe you add in a few more copies of that, that cylinder, just so you, or that parabola, so you get a better idea of the shape. All right. So you get something like this. All right. So you have this idea of, oh yeah, there's my, yeah, that part's kind of hidden in behind. But you can, you know, with a bit of practice, you can get these representations and, and have them look reasonable, right? Um, the name cylinder, of course, comes from the circle example that you start with a circle in the plane, and if you slide that up and down, you get this usual notion of a cylinder. So these are, these are fairly straightforward examples of surfaces in three dimensions and ones that we can probably draw by hand if we, uh, if we put our mind to it. Um, the sort of next most complicated examples and, and sort of the most complicated ones I would expect you to be able to draw are these quadric surfaces. And there are a number of them. I probably won't try to draw them all here. Um, but the quadric surfaces which are sometimes called quadratic surfaces because they're given by quadratic equations. Uh, they come in two flavors. There are some which are graphs, and there are some which are so-called level surfaces. Okay? Um, so you should think of a level surface as being something that's given you know, in terms of an implicit equation, right? Um, in the same way that the circle in the plane, right, is not a graph, it's given by an implicit equation, um, you can get a surface in three dimensions either as the graph of a function of two variables or as the level set for a function of three variables, right? Just as here in, in the plane, the graph of a function of one variable gives you a curve or a level set for a function of two variables can give you a curve. Um, so, the sorts of graphs you'd be looking at are going to be things like, say, z equals um, x squared plus y squared, or maybe z equals x squared minus y squared. Um, these are both examples of what are called paraboloids. Um, this one is, is a circular paraboloid. Uh, this one is called a hyperbolic paraboloid. Um, if you add coefficients on the x squared and the y squared, you would get um, an elliptic paraboloid. Um, level surfaces, you might have something like, well, okay, we can of course do a sphere. All right, there's the unit sphere in three dimensions. I uh, hope that showed up, it did. Uh, but you could also add some coefficients in here. So maybe we put like a 4 and a 9, and now this is no longer a sphere. This is what's called an ellipsoid, right? Um, 
And there are other examples. If, if you change some of these plus signs into minus signs, you get two different types of what are called hyperboloids. And I'll give you one example. So there's two types of hyperboloids. There are one-sheeted and two-sheeted hyperboloids. Um, and you can get some idea of which type you're dealing with by counting up the number of minus signs that you see. Uh, one minus sign up to, you know, depends on how you've arranged the equation, but if you have one minus sign, probably you're dealing with a hyperboloid of one sheet. If you have two minus signs, probably hyperboloid of two sheets. Um, the way you get an idea of what these look like is you use what are called traces, right? So Traces are, are the curves that you get if you take one of these surfaces and you intersect with a plane. Um, in the case of graphs, what's usually convenient is to intersect with planes of constant z, right? So planes that are parallel to the xy plane. Um, and you can see that for positive values of z, so first of all, this thing is undefined for negative z values because the right-hand side is always positive, right, except at zero. Um, and so zero is certainly a point on that surface. Um, as z goes up, we get circles of, well, larger and larger radius. So we, we expect that, you know, when z equals one, we should have a circle of radius one. When z is equal to, say, 1, 2, 3, 4, we should have a circle of radius 2, and so on. On the other hand, you can see that if I were to set, let's say, x equal to 0, so I'm in the yz plane, well, then I just have z equals y squared. That's a parabola. It's your usual parabola that you would draw, like so. Um, and at this point, you've got a pretty good idea of what the surface looks like, right? If you set y equal to 0, z equals x squared, you can get a trace in the, in the xz plane. That one's a little bit harder to draw because you're at a bit of a funny angle. Um, but you get this idea of some sort of bowl shape, right? So this is something that you're doing using traces, okay? So traces are curves, but they're curves that live in three-dimensional space, and they lie on the surface that you're trying to draw. Um, another way that you can visualize some of these is using what are called contours. And contours are essentially the projections of these curves into the xy plane. So contours live in the xy plane. They don't live in, uh, in three-dimensional space. And what a contour would look like is you set, say, z equal to a constant value, and you see what kind of curve you get. So, for example, if z is equal to 1, I need to give myself some uh, asymptotes here. If z is equal to 1, I actually get a hyperbola. I get something that looks like that, right? That's the z equals 1 curve. If I want to say z equals 2, I get another hyperbola. And if I look at negative z values, well, I also get hyperbola. They just open vertically rather than horizontally. So I get, for example, um, something like this for z equals minus 1 minus 2 would look something like that, and so on. Um, and in fact, those asymptotes there, these lines, y equals x and y equals minus x, those also are contour lines. It's the contour that you get if you set x, if you set z equal to 0, right? If z is 0, x squared equals y squared, which has two solutions, either x equals y or x equals minus y, okay? Um, we'll do some of these examples in class, looking at how do we, how do we draw an ellipsoid, how do we draw these hyperboloids, um, you should take a look at some examples in the book before you arrive at class, of course. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll play around with some of these examples, try to get some idea of what these look like. Um, we'll try to draw what this surface actually looks like in three dimensions. Um, this, uh, this hyperbolic paraboloid is, is the one surface that gives everyone trouble, including myself. So if you get the hang of that, you'll be in good shape. All right. Um, 
So that's it for this video. We're going to move on and talk a little bit about notation in the next one before we move on to limits and continuity.